All right. First thing I'm going to say today, did he, how many people raise a hand if you watched Amanda Gorman recite that incredible poem that she wrote? How many people just saw, wow, like it wasn't Lady Gaga or J-Lo that stole the show. It was this amazing, amazing human being. Wow. So cool. So I know, I know start the semester off gushing about poetry. I'm into that. I can do that. I can do that. And having my dog interrupt the first two seconds of class. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm Jason, everybody, and welcome to Biology 240. No, gotcha. I got at least some of you on this first page. That was sweet. Sorry. I know. I really want to be doing that day one. I do. I do. Um, just messing with you. This is Social 100. Um, and yeah, what, uh, sorry, I'm just scanning, scanning all of your faces like I would in a normal class, a normal, <laughs> you know what, I have to put quotes around so many things these days. <laughs> I'm like doing this, I just do this all the time now, so normal class, uh, but this is going to be a fantastic semester, so uh, yeah, let's jump right in, looks like we've got uh, 85 people, oh yeah, let me bring the chat up here uh cool so chime in if you want uh during the course of today uh if you have any questions some of it i'll be able to like respond to but i'm fine with people during class i don't know doing what everybody does during a live feed just you know go for it uh awesome day today right uh new president uh new semester so much new uh and really just a very very positive day i woke up and uh, i've been running 10 hills outside my house and riding 20 miles. And it's cause I'm 47 and I don't want to die. No, it's uh, it's cause I'm just trying to like keep myself in shape cause I sit in front of a computer all the time. I used to get the very awesome exercise of lifting a whiteboard eraser, you know? So doesn't really matter teacher, not a really hard workout. So it's lucky that I chose all the professions that make you poor. I also own a four acre farm in Laporte. So I'm a farmer with, uh, we have 110 chickens. I just grabbed this off the counter because this is from yesterday. Still has the hay in it. Uh, so my son gathered the eggs, but I was just like, you know, I'm just going to grab these. They look great. Um, so we have a four acre farm. Uh, we grow a lot of food and I'm into organic agriculture. And um, also I'm a musician. So there's teacher, farmer, musician. I'm just going for the big dollars, the big dollars. Right. Uh, and then, uh, so I play music and um I've got two boys. Uh, my son, who's 13, his name is Zion, and he's got blonde dreads because he's a Viking, and his hair dreads up if he puts a hat on for five minutes and doesn't comb it anyway. And my son, his other son is 15, and his name is Storm. He plays stand-up bass, and then is, he's a sophomore, and he takes college calculus three or something like that, and he wants to work for Hasbro designing toys. He also has his own vintage toy store on eBay. Um, so now you know that I have a farm. I like organic food. My son's names are Storm and Zion, and one of them has dreads. I'm not a hippie, though. I'm not. I take baths. I do. I do. And so whatever, whatever you may think of me already, I will keep you guessing this semester. Uh, my partner, Julie, is an artist. She does some amazing artwork that's around. I'll show you from time to time. Her name is Julie Downing. I think, I think her website is juliedowningart.com. I don't know. I'll just throw it out there if you want to look at some amazing art. Um, is it cool if I ask equine questions? I'm an equine science major. Well, lucky for me, actually, this is a good question and strange for the first question of the semester, but lucky for me that the hills that I run every morning, there are no less than four horses that watch me exercise every morning. And my neighbor's horse is whiskey and I give whiskey a little bit of uh, food every day. So I'm, I'm, I'm down with horses. I actually see so much like so many animals living out in the country, just as opposed to anywhere else I've been, which is really cool. Um, anyway, okay. So, uh, oh yeah, there's her. Wow, there's her link. People are posting links. You've got it already. Um, the band I play in is called Musketeer Gripweed. And so it's Musketeer is three E's and it's just us and the candy bar. And normally I don't even tell students that till the end of the semester. Um, but we just released an album called More Than Ever and we're all over Spotify and Apple this and um, internet that and all of that <laughs> and I've been playing music since I was 15 years old and my dad would chaperone us like because I wasn't old enough to play places 
So it's been really weird for those of us. Raise your hand if you love live music or if you're used to going to concerts or if like that's your thing. Yeah, look at so many hands. So, I mean, my partner and I, we followed around Fish for 20 years and so many other bands that it's been really wild. And of course, I've been playing since I'm 15. So last summer, we just uh, started having some safe, socially distanced shows out on our farm because it was the first time since I was a kid that I hadn't played shows all summer long. It's uh, called Musketeer Grip Week. And it's not about any of those things. It's actually a John Lennon alias. I'll let you look that up because I like the Beatles. It's a subtle Beatles reference. Um, all right. So that's just a little bit about me. I've been teaching for 15 years and I love sociology. Let me tell you what, I only really, and this is my, this is my dad joke. Um, get ready. Here's my one joke. No, uh, I really only recommend a couple things. I'm not big into like recommending things. I will, however, give a recommendation for the sociology department. I love the sociology department. The people that work in this department, they're all smarter than me and they've all done more than me and I get to work with them and they're fantastic. So I'm a really lucky person for anybody who's taken social classes or you think you might dig it. I am the gateway drug to sociology, all right? They put me in a social 100 class so that I can get people excited about it and I am excited about it, right? So I'm hoping that these lectures are a little less boring I pride myself on still having students that show up at 8 a.m. like in the past, at the end of the semester, they're still showing up to class. I'm still showing up. I guess I didn't strike it rich yet. Not that I would leave teaching altogether, but you know, I've been told that as long as I can become the Mark Rober of sociology, I might have a chance my kids are telling me at just doing like an online YouTube personality thing. So, but I won't abandon you this semester yet. Anyway, all right, so this is Soch 100. The reason I'm telling you a little bit about me is because this is a sociology class, right? You have experiences that I do not have, right? I have experiences that you don't. And so I don't teach like in a way where I just regurgitate academic information towards you and then you just accept that as reality, right? What I do is reciprocal. I wanna put ideas out there and have you bounce ideas off of me and use your experiences and your insight why does it matter? Because this is Soch, not Calc 3. I'm, I mean, I'll, I'm also going to get a few jabs in at math and the Packers throughout the course of the semester. So, hey, bear down, baby. Yeah, I know the Bears suck. I'm also a Bulls fan. I'm a Bulls fan. That's right. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. You don't even know how many Star Wars toys that I'm sitting in front of right now. You don't, so many. I can't even, it's ridiculous. Uh, I also collect vintage toys like my son. Oh, wait, here's one. Oh, that's a little weird, I know. Anyway, uh, hold on. Mandalorian. That's right, Star Wars is my jam. All right, so let's get done with that. Uh, Social 100, we're gonna meet twice a week at uh, these times, basically one to two or one to two fifteen. Now, if you've looked already, I've got like every single lecture that I did like within the last year, like not kind of specific for any class, not live, like at home. And my son, who's 12, he's great at editing, put some Star Wars vehicles in there, a little bit of lounge music. You know, I think they're entertaining. I dig them. That being said, I just got into like, instead of just discussing, lecturing live through Zoom. And I think the students liked it a lot better, right? It was a little bit more like class in real time. So those videos are there for you to watch. That YouTube channel exists. If you want to subscribe so that you know when a new video is posted, that's fine. If you don't, don't worry about it. Most of those videos are already sort of uploaded into the course, right? So we're going to meet on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, this week was unique because we didn't start, you know, till Tuesday or whatever, uh, you know, schedules and MLK day. So normally Monday and Wednesday from one to two. Yep. Sorry. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, that's kind of the approach we'll be taking with lecturing. Fridays are yours. Enjoy. <laughs> like, look, we're a bit at a distance. I think we can accomplish in an hour, two days, what we could basically in 50 minutes, you know, uh, three times. So that's my goal. And I think I want to remain flexible this semester because, uh, and you know, how many, right, how many times people heard this? Oh, this semester is unlike any other. 2021 is like, Hold my beer, right? It, I've, I've got this. 
So we're working within a framework. I am knowing that life is not as normal or as patterned as it might be. So we're just going to meet Monday and Wednesdays. If there's a case that we want to meet Friday or do something special, whatever that might be, um, then I'll announce it. Okay. So uh, that brings me to announcements, right? Check announcements for everything that you might need in this class. Um, and let me go ahead and do a screen share now, see if I've got that. All right, uh, let's do it. Okay. Can everybody see that? Just like a nod of your head just to make sure. Okay, great. So I've got it all laid out. Um, and yes, you can check the syllabus, but what I would really do is just follow as much as you can um, what's on here because all the assignment dates are here. The syllabus has like a rough estimate, right? It's an estimation, a guesstimation of where we're at. This has all the due dates. You know, everything you need is on Canvas. So yes, the syllabus is important, but really everything is here. I mean, it's kind of becoming less important, you know, in ways. Um, welcome, I'm happy that you're here. Uh, here's the YouTube channel. I'll get back to the food drive, syllabus. Um, all right, let's talk for a minute about Top Hat. Now, Top Hat is its own app. It is separate from a textbook or the school or anything like that. But what it is, is imagine like if it's not just A, B, C, D. If I'm like, describe the state of our natural world. Or if I'm like, just write, type one word that comes to mind when you hear or think about the male gender. Ooh, yeah, right? I mean, class gets dicey at times, but we can get all sorts of really awesome information and collect that data in real time. And then I'm gonna click on this because what happens is it's like participation points. You know, when I started teaching, I've been teaching like 15 years now, that's crazy. Like it went just like that, but here's what I did. I did the things that the teachers did that I had that I liked and didn't do the stuff that I didn't like. So instead of penalize you for not showing up, I never do that. You're paying for the class, show up or don't. I mean, that's also at the end of today, if you decide like this class isn't for me, I'm not into it or that I don't, I don't like that guy. That's your decision. That's what this class period is for. So think about if this is gonna work for you and if it is, fantastic. And if you don't think it is, then I'm, I'm not at all offended by that, okay? So this is a way that I reward people for participating. Yes, it does cost some money. I think it's 25 bucks for four months. And what I would do, don't buy the long app because we only have class this semester for four months. If you purchase it, it's around 30 bucks. Um, and then if you click in 90% uh, of the time and above, you get 5% added to your grade. Not just points, five points, but you've got an 85 and now you've got a 90 because you are participating. In sociology, that is how important I think it is for us to keep this, keeping it real, right? For us to like talk about things and discuss things. So if you click in 80% of the time, you get 4% added to your grade. So Top Hat, it's optional. You, if you buy it, then you participate. Now, also, um, when I was in college, I used to eat Martha Gooch. That is the 22 or 25 cent mac and cheese, super, super, super generic version. If you are struggling, I'd rather you eat and buy a used book. Um, I'd rather see if I could get you a Top Hat subscription. So if you really, really can't afford it, I have a few sort of like scholarship subscriptions. And I think that, um, you know, I can help people in need. I don't want money to be the you know, the factor that keeps you from doing something, but I do think it's worth it. And I mean, you know, I spend like 25 or 30 bucks now and it doesn't take me any time. It's like two seconds. Oh, I spent it. That being said, if that uh, is something that, you know, would hold you back, let me know and I'll help you out. Okay. Um, spring dates. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So since we have class for basically five months and it's only a four month subscription. When do you recommend purchasing the subscription if you're going to? Purchase it now. You know what? Because I think they basically know that it's the course of a semester. I've never had them cut it off in the middle of a semester. I mean, I think that would have people just not buy their product and they have to stay. I mean, we, I make them stay competitive. I make them email us. If you need any help, email Top Hat. 
tell them what class you're in or email me and I'll just forward you straight to those people to help if anybody has any hangups. So yeah, the four month is fine. Yep, that'll cover us. It's basically a semester, you know? Okay, cool, thank you. And if they did something awful, like cut it off, then I would just, that's where I would cut off our participation. You know, I wouldn't penalize students with it or whatever. I'd be like, top hat sucks. Everybody, woo, you know, <laughs> like we're done participating or whatever. All right, um, so exams, here's the deal. Uh, exams are all online and basically they are open for about 30 hours or 24 hours, probably open at eight or 9 AM on one day, like the 12th, that's when it opens. Then it's open until the next day at noon. Okay. Most people, um, knock these out, excuse me, or complete these in, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's 50 point or 50 questions, two points, each multiple choice. You will be writing this semester. We will be working on cultivating your writing, but we write enough papers, you'll be writing plenty. So that's why these aren't essay exams. You know, you, it's in and out and it's, it's in, I will provide study guides, but here's what I wanna do. People are like, how, how do I study? Watch the lectures, where does the textbook and the lecture overlap? And then I also provide a study guide. And here's my deal. Yeah, I know, like I said, I was joking about the hippie thing, but I'm all teacher. If I seem cool or like it's gonna be a fun semester, yeah, I'm cool and yeah, it will be, but, I'm all professional. Retention is my thing. We do it right the first time and then we rehearse it right again. And then we take the test on it and we reinforce that knowledge. I think sociology, it's super important to understand this information. So I want us to retain it. Okay. So, you know, we'll go about things in a way that I think will be really helpful. If you miss one test, I always say you can miss one test because life is going to happen. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. Um, Life is gonna happen and let's say, uh, oh, here's another thing. I love to use modern terms poorly to annoy my teenagers on purpose, all right? So anything that you can like feed me through the course of the semester, right? That I can like totally screw up for my boys so that they, ugh, so that they hate it. That's what I love, that's what I love. So anyway, you might be shredding some gnarly pow pow bruh and break a leg. That might, ha that might happen. Um, you might, break up with a boyfriend or girlfriend and you're like, it's the end of the world. And three weeks later, you're like, Whoo I'm glad I'm not dating that person anymore. Um, life is going to happen. And so whatever happens, I have this on the syllabus, stay in touch. If you like life happens and you kind of lose track of a couple weeks, I'm not going to look at you over my glasses in some disapproving academic way. Um, you just need to reach out to me so that we can meet and get you back on track. I mean, we have GTAs here and they're rock stars. They're gonna introduce themselves. And like, you know, I told you I'm a Bulls fan. So my crew that helps me with my classes, we're champions every time, all day long. And so I want this class to be awesome. We're here to help you. And here's the deal. I want it to be like a smaller school. Forget that there's 130 people here. You can meet with us on Zoom during our office hours or outside of that. I wanna be available to you as a resource. We wanna improve your writing. We wanna teach you sociology. So stay in contact. If you find that life for whatever reason gets you out of the game, contact us and get back in it. I'm here to be a resource for you. I want us, our guide, the way I guide my GTAs and we guide this class is with compassion, right? And respect for everybody. And that's how we get things done. Uh, if you've had me in classes before, um, and I know that some people have, because I've been reading some of the comments here, uh, that you know that, here, type it. If you've had me before, what do I say at the end of every single class period? And while you're typing it, I'll, I'll turn into a Kermit the Frog meme. Anybody? Anybody have it? I know there's some people, I know there's some people in here that know it because they said me before. All right, at the end of every class period, I say, be good people and do good things. Oh, there it is, be good people, peace, almost. So what I expect from my students during the course of the semester is exactly that, okay? To be good people and do good things. Now, as lighthearted as I seem, I do have, uh, uh, you know, I do have this one part of kind of like the class intro that I give that might seem heavy handed and I'm okay with that. That is this, in the social departments, right? We have respect for everybody. The 80 year old people that were in this department were marching with people 60 years ago. They're marching with people now. This is a department where everyone is welcome, okay? 
I have also been doing race relations work as a primary kind of driver in my life for over 25 years. So here's what can't happen. No racism, no discrimination, no white supremacist loser garbage, okay? Any of that has no plans and no place in my classroom. And I'll tell you what, I only say this because every single year, somebody screws it up at CSU. And I'll be the first person to say that I think administration needs to be a lot more dedicated. They're dedicated to diversity, but I want them to be more dedicated towards diversity. Last year, somebody put uh, blackface on and then did the whatever thing, um, the Black Panther thing, um, despicable and deplorable. The year before, somebody held or rolled up a paper towel noose and put it outside a student of color's room awful. These are subhuman, that's subhuman behavior. And although it has had a place in our culture in a revived way over the past several years, it has no place in my classroom and no place on CSU campus. And you bet that I get kind of, I, I go for it. Because when I saw that last year at the blackface thing, I immediately went home, got on Aries and looked at my class lists and cross referenced it with the people involved. Because I was like, I know these aren't my students. And I know that that won't be you. Okay. So during the course of the semester, here's the most important thing that I'm going to teach you. Cultural pluralism. All right. That's the most important thing I can teach you. I, I wouldn't have a chance to teach you anything more important. Right. The ability to try and see things from someone else's perspective. All right. Not just seeing things always from your own perspective, but trying to see things and understand things from multiple perspectives that gives us a more diversity of thought and more knowledge. And the more diversity, the better. Oh, Jason, you're just giving us a diversity speech. No, I'm not. Biodiversity in a river. Take a couple of those things out of the river and see how well that river functions. I am telling you, it's a scientific fact. The more diverse we are, the more accepting we are, and the more opinions and beliefs and views we have, the stronger we are as human beings. And I guarantee you in a sociology class, ooh, I I pointed, I'm sorry. The, the, the more we do in the sociology class, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. Because I'm going to encourage you to expand your lens of how you think and what you see. And you're going to be challenged. Sociology class is basically like when you go home for a holiday and your parents are like, don't talk about this, 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 and this. That's what we talk about every single day in sociology, right? Yeah, I mean, that's why I love it. So to me, uh, there's so much awesome, exciting stuff about this class, but we have to do it with respect and with kindness and with compassion. Are we all on the same page? Nod your heads. We've got a page full of human beings. Good. Uh, I've got a page full of human beings. Uh, excellent. Out there someplace in the world. Um, uh, okay, so there's four tests. Those are multiple choice. Uh, the top hat. Okay, I'm going to screen share again and let me, oops, hold on. Go back to this, go on my screen. I just talked my way through it, screen share. And let's go back to announcements. And all right, extra credit. Now you can click in and get some extra points by doing Top Hat. But I have been um, getting my students to feed people for 15 years. And it started off in a corner of a classroom at Front Range. And then my office with food like piled up high. And then we just pared it down to a giving day. And last semester, it started 15 years ago as that. And I'm just, okay, now I have to stop the screen share. Ah, I have to, sorry, because I want to see more of your faces. Last semester, you, not me, my students donated $9,000, 18,000 meals. Yes, that's right. All, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, all of those facial expressions, yes, right? We did that. Somebody's grandma donated $1,500 and got like 800 students more extra credit and fed people. So I ask that for, I, I think a minimum donation of $5 and that provides 10 meals and you can do more. You can share the link with friends and family. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let me pull this up again. And uh, okay, let me show you. Uh, okay, we got that. All right, here we go. This is our particular class's link. It should be up, CSU 100, zero donated, but I've got a whole bunch of classes, right? So here, 
front range, CSU, front range, front range, CSU and CSU. We it was like six classes here and we are, you know, the social 100 001. So this is where you donate. We have our own page where you donate to. Okay. Um, and so uh, throughout the course of the semester, you can donate or at the very end. Sorry, I got to close these windows up. So, uh, and that gets you 25 points. Now, if we get, I don't know, $5,000 um, and we go above that, then we can get more points. And I think last semester they raised, like I said, $9,000, 18,000 meals. So it's like a game show. If we can get more, I'll go higher. What's that number? It's higher. We'll go more. Like whatever. I think that we even now, if you've had me, you know that um, if you've had me as a teacher, if we were in the classroom, I bump those speakers. That's right. I, I, I play music before class, a little bit of Lizzo, some funk. We rock out um, and, and I test out the classroom and we, you know, and then I turn the lights down. Here's why I do that. Okay. Because we have studies on lighting and fluorescent lighting isn't great for retention and music relaxes us, okay? And so we learn better and we open up. So all of these things are for these scientific learning purposes, but I think that we have to do learning though outside of four walls, right? Like we've got to get outside the classroom and do something. So right now, even though we won't be donating food in person, I think that we can help feed people um, in our community and, and it'll be fantastic, you know? Uh, yeah, so that's the extra credit food drive. Is there a specific period that has to be donated by? Yep, the food drive link is in announcements, but it's also on the discussion board and it's due by May 4th. Usually it doesn't start to kick in until halfway through the semester. Actually, let me tell you when it kicks in, right after our first test. <laughs> and people are like, oh, oh, snap. I didn't get what I wanted to. So I, I, extra credit would be a good thing. Um, now, listen, one more thing, that being said, if you don't have $5, stop pointing again, sorry. If you don't have $5, you can write a two-page paper on um, poverty and homelessness in Northern Colorado and get the same amount of points. If you're struggling, uh, again, you don't have to pay, you can do something different. And you're gonna have to make a post with a couple citations anyway for donating food. So there is a way to do that if you don't have any resources to do that. And make sure that if you donate, you donate in your name and also, my mom um, always used to like spade or neuter like four or five people's dogs a year, just people who couldn't afford it. She would like donate, you know, to all sorts of things. So you could share that link with people in your family or friends. If you know people that like to do things like, you know, feed people, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, you know, people that like to donate to good causes. So that's what we're going to do for extra credit. Um, all right. Let me head back here to the class. And um, let me open it up real quick. And I, I want us to be able to think about things this semester in a timeline, okay? So we know we need to know our history. So I'd like us to be aware that over here is the past. And right now is nowish, nowish. So it's, it's not, it can't be now because now is gone, right? Nowish. And then all the way to the future. Because we've got to know if we're going to look at culture, right? That's the, one of the first things I'm going to teach you. Second thing, I guess now, culture is not stagnant. It's always changing. So we have to know what came before us to know where we are now and why, and then to know about the future and what that looks like. And it's not just doomed to repeat ourselves. It's so that we have an idea and a complete understanding um, of how culture changes and what happens and how we take three steps forward and five steps back and, and what that looks like as far as a global community. Anyway, things like that. Okay. Um, I'm thinking because this is just our first day, we still got a little bit to go and I want to cover a few things. Oh yeah. Um, but let me open up to questions. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I'm just go ahead and unmute your mic and I'll take a few questions about me, about the class, and then I'll, and then I'll talk about uh, the paper. Anything? There's 93 of us here, I'm sure you've got a question. Uh, how do you click in on Top Hat? Um, so basically they should have sent an email around Top Hat to all the students and given you a join code for the class. I think I also in the announcements have the join code there. So you go to Top Hat, that's your class code. You buy the app, 
um, and then you click in uh, to that app. And on Tuesdays and excuse me, Mondays and Wednesdays, I will release questions in the morning. So you're in the app, you don't see any questions, don't worry about it. I haven't done anything because I just wanted to do a class intro today. So next Monday in the morning early, they're usually open all day. I will open up a whole bunch of questions or maybe even tomorrow so that you have all weekend to respond. And then you respond to those questions. <coughs> um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward, but no, I didn't, I didn't cue any of those up yet. All right, go ahead and unmute your mic if you have a question. You don't have to type it, you can ask it. Do you prefer using um, Top Hat from your phone if you're doing Zoom on your computer, or is it easier to do it from your computer as well? You know, that's a that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I've never tried to do it on my phone because I release the and, and usually I release the questions early on in the day, and we don't meet until 1 p.m. anyway. So there's probably not a time when that will overlap for anybody really. So you know, however you think, if if you sign on on Top Hat, I always do it on my computer. But that's, you know, I got a decent Apple now and I'm doing most of my stuff from that. And, you know, so uh, do we click in today? Nope. No clicking in today. Does that answer your question, though? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Do you want us to answer the questions before class? Any time during that day is fine. I'll probably open them up at 8 or 9 a.m. They'll probably be open until 6 p.m. that night. I usually plan on using those like the next class period. So as long as you click in during any time during that day when they're open, that's fine. All right, um, more questions. Go ahead and unmute your mic if you have a question. And it can be about me, the farm, this class, any other sociology classes, the department, anything. When will the questions start being released? Uh, probably tomorrow. Usually it'll be on the days that we have class, Monday and Wednesday. Um, so it says we don't have class on Friday. Do we do things independently? Yeah, uh, I'd say use Friday. It's only 50 minutes. Plus, I'm going to go about an hour for each of those other two days. So I think it'll work out to the same amount of time. So Friday is yours, you know, and people kind of ask me sometimes, um, what pace should I be working at? That is a learning styles thing. Some people work better by reading the chapter and then they see the lecture. Some people work better, just jump into the lecture. And then when you read the chapter, you've got to frame a reference for it. However you learn best, you know, I've got a ton of pictures with the, um, because I want to make it fun with the, uh, and I'm a huge pop culture person. So the lectures have a ton of pictures and stuff like that. Cause I believe a lot of people are visual learners. We're also going to have a lot of discussions in real time. I'm not spending all of my time lecturing when we meet. I'll also be doing things like getting into a discussion about a film that we're gonna watch or something like that. Now, sometimes, most of the times I, I find reputable links that don't cost money and not on the dark web. But occasionally you may have to like rent, you know, something on Amazon if it's a film that we're gonna watch. Although I've considered, and I think I can do it because it's for educational purposes, streaming on Zoom, a film that I own during one of our class periods. But again, I really wanna make use of this time as much as we can. And that will really come from our discussions. It'll come from my lecturing a bit, but my lecture is like lecture for a slide, ask a question. Lecture for two slides, ask three questions. You know, you have experiences that I don't. And now imagine times 130, 40 people that this class has, we can get into some really cool stuff. We're gonna really, I mean, I don't even know, like I love teaching deviance and other things, but I am as excited after 15 years to teach a social 100 section, because this is where we learn all of that stuff. This is where we get into like everything that you will end up loving about sociology. So, all right, do you sell your eggs? We do, we do, um, we sell them from our farm stand so you could pay through Venmo. We also do NoCo farmer's market. I think there's a NoCo, NoCo virtuals farmer's market, which I'm not giving a plug for us because we always sell our eggs out, but there's some really cool, I mean, not everything in the past year has been negative, right? Like I do want us to focus on the positive. We couldn't do office hours at any time, but now we can, it's an easy thing. People have done the Zoom thing. Anybody that wants to get something from our farm just pays through Venmo and picks it up at the farm stand safe and you know, socially distanced. And I know that I can count on all of my students to wear masks, right? Because why else would you pay $100,000 for a degree in science and facts 
and not wear a mask, which is all about science and fact. So I don't really find, I don't imagine that, I honestly don't imagine that any of my students would have any pushback against it, considering the money you are shelling out to get an education. I think that these are the, exactly the people, you, my students, that are gonna model good behavior for other people. Um, and so I, I, I dig that, yeah. Um, do we have to watch outside lectures, also lectures from the class? The lectures that are online, there's a whole semester in modules. So on the left side, right, on, in modules, you can find most of the lectures, but it's not in real time. I pre-recorded them. It's a lot of what uh, we're gonna be talking about. Um, and I will be giving similar material lecture live. Some people like to go check that out. I just wanted to have everything available for people, like everything in the fall. And so I just carried on with it. I spent like all last summer building this huge class only to, to kind of to find out that I really do like to lecture live, of course, more. But that way you can go in and watch those. I'm going to record every single session in class. So then you can watch those. So there's a link to the YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe, like I said, go ahead. If you don't, and you want to just check and it's embedded in announcements or modules. That's fine with me too. Sometimes you get a faster notification. Um, but as far as that's concerned, I don't know, they're both valuable. Live is when we're talking and you're gonna see people's faces, but it, there might be a time when we don't cover something in a chapter and I'll just say, go watch the lecture that I did, you know, um, like last summer, but prepping for this year for social. So yeah. Do you sell any other animal products? Trying to transition my dog to eat a more raw diet. Um, no, nope, just uh, eggs right now in the winter. So yeah, we do starter plants. So we do like all organic starter plants and flowers, tomatoes and veggies. And last year we sold a ton of that stuff through the farm stand. So, you know, if you're looking at planting a garden or something like that later on in the spring, I also teach a, teach a SOCH 220, which is an environmental sociology class. Um, and so, you know, that class usually comes out to my farm and we do a thing about biodiversity. And I would love to have people out to my farm now this class is kind of big and it's kind of not a great time for people to gather but maybe I'll take I usually take some videos on my tractor by the chickens outside once in a while I don't know I'll, I'll show you the farm virtually uh sometime during the course of the semester where's your band performed anywhere for fun Justin State no we're actually we have booking and management we've been playing for 15 years this is our fifth album that we released um we performed, you name it, everywhere. We've opened up for just about anybody you could think of. Um, and then of course this last year, er, put the brakes on, um, released an album, did some socially distant shows at our farm. So yeah, love playing up in the mountains. Uh, listen to podcasts, nah, not really. Um, I should, I should, I should. I'm a huge Bulls fan, a huge Star Wars fan. There's so, there's probably, I would, I, I would spend all of my time just absorbing other people's awesome information, but I have to kind of check myself a little bit. Um, uh, Beatles, what's your favorite Beatles song? Hey Bulldog. Probably don't know that one. So unless you roll deep with the Beatles, uh, Hey Bulldog is my favorite Beatles song. All right, now let's get back to the class. Um, all right, uh, graduate assistants. We have two fantastic rock star grad assistants and I know we just met Shelby. I don't want to embarrass you. I'm going to introduce you first with a question. Has anybody ever told you, I, I, I kind of have this weird talent, or maybe it's because I grow up in this culture where we obsess about famous people. I have a pretty good like gift of being like, you look like so-and-so. There was a guy in my class yesterday, dead ringer for Jack Black. And I was like, whoa, Jack Black's in my class, sweet. <laughs> So now I'm gonna embarrass you and ask you, do people tell you ever that you look like Angelina Jolie? I knew you were gonna say that, Jason, as soon as we started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, people say that, and they say they, they do the exact same thing you just said. Like, I don't know if you ever get this, but. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you say that. Yes, I get that I, all the time, which is a fantastic compliment. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry to embarrass you. A lot of no, times no, it's are okay. like, hey, hey, I know you. You're that one guy. And I'm like, you mean your hippie friend with a beard? And they're like, yeah, that guy. Uh, or I'm like, you mean white Jesus from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Because it's not yeah. Bethlehem in the Middle East. All right. 
what do you know about? Tell me, uh, introduce yourself. Um, because the cool thing about our two GTAs is that they'll be working on your writing all semester long and you work with the same GTA. So you're not like getting different people telling you the same thing and they haven't overlapped. You get to work with both of, you'll work with one of these two and then you'll also work with me. You know, so just so that you know, there's some consistency you see in your schedule. That's how we'll break it up. But anyway, sorry, go ahead, introduce yourself. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Jason. Um, my name is Shelby. It's fantastic to see a bunch of faces. I appreciate Jason, like encouraging everyone to have their cameras on. So, um, I haven't been able to see a lot of faces. So great to see you guys. Um, I am in the master's program in the sociology department at CSU. I am only a second semester, so I'm very new to Fort Collins. Um, I said my little bio, if you guys have like any Fort Collins favorites, you like to share anything. I'm really enjoying getting to know the area, um, even in a really horrible time to be moving somewhere. So um, I appreciate all those recommendations and whatnot. Um, I am from Indianapolis. I don't know if anyone's heard of Ball State University. I graduated with a degree in sociology and Spanish. So if you guys have any Spanish questions, um, I love the language and um, Latin American cultures are a second favorite of mine to sociology and I look forward to um, combining the two. So if anyone has interest um, there, I'd love to chat. Um, as far as sociology goes, I'm super interested in race and ethnic relations. So I'm super excited to be working with Jason, um, as well as um, broadly criminology, deviance, mental illness, and uh, sociology of culture. So I'm super excited to work with you guys this semester. I, I really love writing, and so I look forward to um, helping develop some writing skills as well. Is there anything else you'd like me to add, Jason? I did upload a little like summary of all of that I just spit at you on Canvas and the announcements. So um, feel free to look that over in my emails in there. And I really look forward to getting to know some of you guys. OK, great. All right, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Jian Hong Kwong, and you can just call me Kwong. And I'm another GTA for uh, Social 100 in the spring of uh, 2021. And uh, I'm really happy to help you succeed in this cross. And I'm actually in the second semester of my MA program at CSU. And specifically uh, in terms of my research interest uh, is uh, deviance, globalization and environmental sociology. And yeah, I, I feel pretty happy to see all of you in today's meetings and the last sentence I would like to finish my introduction is, I hope that the 2021 can be better than 2020. <laughs> Thanks, Juan. I appreciate it. Awesome. So these are the individuals that you'll be working with. They're fantastic. I mean, everybody that I've worked with in, in this department, it's, yeah, it's just awesome. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, I'll stop gushing about the department. Isn't that weird? Like I was on academic probation four times during my master's degree. <laughs> now I'm like so part of the department. I remember the first time I got put on academic probation, my mom was like, really one week into your master's degree? And I was like, yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, shoot. I can't talk about that though. I've got a lawyer who's standing right here says I can't relate any of those stories to you about anything that happened between 1997 and 2002. So we're just gonna focus on the now. <laughs> All right, um, let me talk about lastly, uh, the paper in this class. So there's one big paper in this class and it's called the Food Matters paper. Now, um, we are not technically, specifically learning about just food in this class by any stretch of the imagination. But I could give an assignment about so many things that wouldn't relate to everybody. I mean, it would be nearly impossible. But everybody eats, everybody eats to live, everybody eats to survive, everybody has a relationship with food. So I'm going to ask you right off the bat, one of those nerdy questions that nobody really says out loud. What's your relationship with food? Right? Like, what is it? Have you ever thought about that before? We're going to think about that this semester. And I have a pretty big paper that looks at ingredients, conventional farming, GMO, local, organic. And then I have a third section, and I'll talk about this later in the semester specifically, Chipotle is my life. 
And the third section is going to be, um, I'm just, I love reading the comments. The third section is going to be um, that something that you pick, like wrestlers that like put on tons of calories, like, it, like eating habits, or how about this? People that are vegans that don't want to eat meat that look for burgers that smell and taste like dead flesh. Oh, what about that? That's something that gets me thinking, right? I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying that is a thing about food that makes me go, hmm? So whatever it might be, you, I love Michael. Oh, oh yes. Big fan of his writing documentaries. And we will be watching some food related stuff, but I think the sociology of food in how it relates to all of us is gonna be really cool. Um, and then that third section, I let you pick something. And there's really, really so many things that you can choose, but here's why I do that. I don't do it so that students don't plagiarize. I do it so that you can write about something meaningful to you, okay? Because why continue to give assignments that just have you regurgitate things that are academic yet don't connect to who you are or what you're about? Now, I'm sure that doesn't happen at this college, so, <laughs> you know, everybody's doing that, whatever. But I just want you to know that there's some parts of assignments that I want you to consider the whole time and include your personal insight, right? Like, again, maybe for Calc, when you write an essay, I don't know, do you write an essay for Calc? Maybe not. Bad example. But for some other class, if you write an essay, you, you might not need to include your own thoughts, experiences, or feelings. Again, I think that is important with SOCH because of all the different types of topics. So, you know, that food section of that paper might be something that you're particularly interested in, whatever that is, you don't need to decide right now. Okay, um, paper, assignments, the assignments, the content assignments we have are questions from the chapters, they're essay, they need in-text citations, but there's a description. So click on that first one, it's not due for a bit. I do want to screen share again, uh, one last time, and let's go to discussions. Discussions, I think, needs probably the most clarification of anything. Now, first thing that's due on January 26th is an observation, and it does say um, social observation. Uh, we have to go out in the world around us, go into the community, but I put at a socially distanced or safe manner and observe people for 20 minutes. Here's the deal. I had somebody email me this morning. They're like, Jason, I'm in the UK and we're on lockdown and I don't live with anybody. <laughs> I don't see anybody. How am I supposed to do this? And so I sat and I was like, oh, there's got to be like a million live streams of like farms and parks and sports, you know? So like, if you don't want to go out someplace to observe, you could find a live stream uh, that's probably really interesting where you could observe human behavior. You could sit outside your dorm room, um, whatever it might be, right? But make sure again that it's safe. And then you basically just write about what you see, what you observe, what you notice. You might want to relate it to something in chapter one, but right now this is Jedi training. I am training you to be a sociologist, to think like a sociologist. So we're going to start to do things like this, like make observations like a sociologist, okay? Now, that being said, the rest of these discussions say things like, number one, can you imagine that I would assign this to you, chicken people, <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing documentary. I bet you, I won't bet, but many of you probably haven't seen it. Um, I'm going to decide whether I'm going to live stream it from class, but for those of you that have maybe Amazon or Amazon Prime, you might be able to get a jump on that. Let me see how I'm going to do that. But it says here, February 11th is the due date. And February 4th, you must have your first post. What that means is the due date is always first. The, the deadline, the end of it is February 11th. But if I just tell people that, then 99% of uh, it's true human beings or 90 some would post mostly on the last day. And then nobody's really discussing. There, I'm going to do this again. Discussing, it's just kind of regurgitating on the internet. So at least a week out from that. So by the 4th, and you could do it if you watch Chicken People now. You can do it whenever. If you if, jump into it, you watch it, and then make your first post, and then that's what people start replying to, and then you can reply to other people's posts. So you have to have, and it it describes it here. And I'm going to click back, um, and I'm not seeing it right now. So let me import it and make sure that it's there. But it's what I expect from discussions. So let me let me make a second a second go around of this because I don't see it, but. To get the 25 points or whatever, you need to post once a week and ahead of time and at least two times before the end date. 
people usually post six or seven or eight times. I'm just asking you to make three posts, a bit of a longer first post, um, and then do it early enough so where people can reply to that. Uh, okay, so the social observation does not need that. It does not need to be done a week in advance though. That is totally separate. And really the first thing that I would look at uh, as far as an assignment. If you click up here for syllabus, not only can you download the syllabus, it has approximate, it has dates and approximate material that we're gonna cover. But I would look at this, Canvas has everything. When is it due? What's going on? Where can it be found? Link, 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 cha-cha-cha, right? So everything you need is right here, even though I think the syllabus, you know, is fairly complete and definitely important. Okay. Um, can you go over those sections for the paper? I'm not going to go over the sections for the paper quite today. I'm going to let people have time to read the assignment, and then I'll do a whole separate thing about that paper. It's not due, I don't believe, until April 12th. Um, so we have some time. Uh, all right. So tell me, I'm going to open it up to questions, comments about anything again one last time, because I just want to do fuzzy margaritas count as food. I'm going to say yes. Just going to say yes. I don't know. Sounds like a good answer. I had some, I had some really interesting questions from my class yesterday. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and open it up again. Um, any questions about the class, how this works, um, who I voted for? I would never tell you that. I'm just kidding. Uh, what kind of dogs I have? I don't know. What we grow on the farm? You name it. All right, go ahead. What questions do you have about this class? I want everybody feeling good about this on day one, and we don't need to rush. We'll be, you know, we'll be done here any minute, but what, uh, can you show us your dogs? Mm. All right, I'll show you one dog. Yeah, give me a second though. <laughs> All right. This is Boba Fett, intergalactic bounty hunter. It, she's my son's dog, and he's a huge Star Wars fan, so he named her, gave her the deadliest name. But here's the deal. I was never a small dog person. I kind of was like anti-small dogs even, I think. She is, oh, she's got some breath on her, though. Whew. But she is hilarious. Uh, absolutely um, <laughs> absolutely love the small dog thing. We have a Catahoula also, Huckle. He's the greatest farm dog. And if you don't know what kind of dog a Catahoula is, Google it, because it's really, really interesting. Katrina actually pushed them up and over. They were mostly, they're the Louisiana state dog and mostly just in the South forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, and then I have a pit bull and her name is Alma and she's our snuggle muscle. And you haven't cuddled against uh, anything if you haven't snuggled a really ripped pit bull. They are the best. Um, and she's so sweet. And mostly she sleeps all the time. She's like the chillest of all my dogs. Uh, okay. Uh, how long should the first discussion post be? Yeah, a couple paragraphs. I'll make sure that that is in there in the first post. I want to go check. I think it is, but I want to make sure. Um, how long have you played chess? Chess? Oh, oh did you see that? Yeah, that's a custom set. A friend of mine who's a potter um, made that uh, about 20 years ago and inlaid it with silver around all the pieces and stuff. Check it out. Really, really cool. They're all glazed. There's like silver around them. Anyway, I love chess. Uh, just started watching Queen's Gambit a couple weeks ago. I'm probably late to that whole business, but we watched it one night and the chessboard magically reappeared the next day, you know? So for those of you that love chess, sometimes you just need something to remind you of how cool something was, but yeah, yeah. I used to play chess all the time. Uh, love her name. Part Frenchie. Nope. Nope. Boston Terriers are the skinny versions and uh, Frenchies are the little chubby versions. They both have ears like bats though. That's how you uh, love. Do you have any cats? We have two cats, Ziggy Marley. My son, when he was five years old or four years old, named the cat Ziggy Marley because he was really into reggae. Um, 
and Safa. And she's like the farm cat that teleports. Like I'll be up here by the house and I'll walk down to the back four acres and she'll be laying in a bush there. Like before I get there, it's the weirdest thing. I think she can like teleport all over the farm. Uh, can we see the pit bull one day during class? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but she's way too big to grab napping right now. Or like I said, uh, as my son would say, she's thick. There you go. Me misusing modern terms again. I love it. Uh, let's see. Show's so good. Can we see the cats? What's your favorite band that you've opened for? Ooh, favorite band that we've opened for. Oh. Have you heard of Los Lobos? We've opened up for Los Lobos. Those guys are the coolest. They are, they are so cool. Um, we've opened up for Bernie Worrell, Steve Kimmock, some of the guys that have played in the dead. Um, uh, we've opened up for uh, Luther Dickinson uh, for the uh, North Mississippi All-Stars and he played in the Black Crows for a while. Um, anyway, uh, you could say bet to your sons that might be cringe for them. Yeah, uh, I know that they like to get together with the boys. Yeah, I know that's go that's going on right now. Um, <laughs> I worked at the theater where they performed. Saturdays are for the boys. I think you spelled that wrong. Did you spell that wrong? Isn't it B-O-I-S? Come on, I know a few things. <laughs> you should have you should have seen me two semesters ago when I found two years ago when I found out what a visco girl was. I mean, that's the deal about sociology. It's so interesting and everything that you could look at in pop culture or around you in some way is sociology, right? We're just going to, I'm going to give you the tools to break it down, whether that's gender or race or food or whatever that might be, right? All right. My bad. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Um, okay. Any last questions? All right. I'll wait for just one second. I know some people are, are headed out to your next class. That's cool. Um, uh, so let me leave you before I say goodbye. This is how I say goodbye every single class period, okay? Be good people and do good things, all right? Represent me and you and everybody else that you know with safety, kindness, love, and compassion. And we will go about this semester uh, doing some awesome sociology. I'm excited. New semester. Peace, everybody. Take care. I will Thank upload you. this. Uh, so that if you missed it, you can watch it later. Uh, yeah, take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep, peace. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.